attention with that light. Right, so quiet. Okay, I'd like to call the Village of Wolverine Lake Wednesday, April 10th, Council Meeting Order. We stand for the Pledge of the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call please. Jeff? Here. 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 Any additions to business? None tonight. Thank you. Okay. Approval agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Dove. Second by Newman. Any discussion on that? No. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Uh, correspondence. We had a letter from say, Madison Heights regarding. Uh, Statutory revenue sharing reform. They have a resolution. Here's a do something with that. But, um, also, there was a programming note from Comcast and uh, our real market updates. That motion to receive and file. Second. Motion by Duff to receive and file. Second by Newman. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're the first call of the public. It's an opportunity for citizens to address council on agenda items only. Oh, actually, I should have okay. added the uh, school system, right? Okay, I think Mr. Chaffield's going to talk during the second, second oh, public okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's fine. <clears throat> Seeing anybody at first call? Seeing none, we'll bypass the first call of public and move on to the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Duff, second by Kaznecki to approve the consent agenda. It's presented. Any discussion on that? Roll call, please. Jeremy? Yes. Kaznecki? Yes. Nick Yes. Pedro? Yes. Newman? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Duff? Yep. Okay, we have no board appointments, and uh, we're up to uh, Mr. Powell. We got the Wolverine ditch enclosure first. First of all, I want to apologize uh, in that uh, I'm not nearly as good looking as my colleagues are. Uh, I've been here for the last couple months, but it's good to be back in the state of Michigan. So uh, thank you for your patience. Um, the uh, ditch enclosure project is uh, continuing. They've got the entire ditch enclosed between Adrian and Pinecrest uh, along the uh, west side of Wolverine Drive. They're doing restoration right now. By restoration, they're bringing in the dirt, smoothing out all the uh, all the ditch lines, and then we will be having a landscaper actually come in to do the fine grading and the planting of the grass and making sure that it's put back as a landscaper would, not as an underground contractor would. So, uh, and then we will be uh, coordinating the uh, repair of the paving of the driveways and the roadway um, when we get the other section done between Penny Lake and Greenway Drain. So that's the status of that job. I wanted to make sure that uh, council knew in case you were getting calls, um, they are doing the cleanup of some of the old culvert material that was removed. Uh, if you've seen pictures, it was extremely uh, badly um, uh, rusted out, the culverts that were removed. The contractor is going to be removing those this week so that they're not in people's uh, yards or in the road right of way. And I wanted to maybe mention also that um, uh, this job has gone a little slower than what I anticipated, but it's really ended up uh, being a blessing. They're doing a very slow, meticulous job. It's a uh, smaller company as I presented back when we uh, made this presentation and, and I hired them. Um, they're moving very meticulously, fitting these structures and the culverts or the storm sewer between utilities. And uh, uh, we just had, had an incident last week that if they had it moved any faster, they would have actually broken a water main because the water main was not as indicated on the plans mm -hmm. nor as staked out. And so as they were moving slowly, it, the village might know that it's a, um, 
it's called an AC or translite uh, water main. So it's uh, the older it gets, the more brittle it gets. And so if they had it moved much faster, they moved their bucket and hit it, and they uh, knew that they hit it, and they uncovered it with their uh, shovels, and they found that the water main, if they had it dug where they were supposed to, they would have broken the water main. So. Uh, um, a little disappointed that's moving slower than what we anticipated, but uh, they're doing a very good job. And we have a, uh, uh, in my absence, they're doing a very good job. Uh, our inspector is a uh, one Jeff Miller. And so uh, Jeff knows how to do exactly the work that they're doing. So he is there making sure that it's done properly and he's uh, doing a great job for us as well. Um, that being said, um, if you were copied on the pay request by the contractor, um, he just submitted a lump sum pay request for $40,000. Well, uh, I've never presented a lump sum to council before, and I'm certainly not going to do it today. Um, he was taken back when I said, no, we have to get very detailed. We have to explain to council what the money's for, all the work that you've done. You have to subtract out your uh, your expenses. And so my, my letter to council is much more detailed than his proposal. And quite frankly, it ended up being uh, less than what his proposal requested because he forgot the village paid for all the materials. <laughs> so uh, he, he would have liked to have been paid twice. We didn't want him to be able to do that. So that being said, um, half the job is done. And uh, so th I'm recommending after uh, evaluating all the expenses and costs um, that the council authorize the payment of $35,208 to AJ Excavating for the work they've completed thus far. Okay. Do you have a motion? Matter of fact? Second. Motion by Duff, second by Newman. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 Pedro? Yes. Newman? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Duff? Yes. Jeremy? Yes. There you go. Okay, I just wanted to bring up two additional things, and that's another uh, negative of me uh, making the presentation, that meetings always go longer. Um, I called the uh, Road Commission today because you might have seen the Road Commission was out doing some work at South Commerce and Glengarry Road today. Um, they still haven't established a start date, although Eagle has sent out their advertisements because uh, they, have they have required a permit to be pulled by Eagle. Uh, those of you that have been on council for more than 10 minutes know that Eagle is very hard uh, to work with in the state. Um, and so I called to find out when they were going to be started. And uh, the Road Commission is going to do it a little differently than they've done elsewhere uh, in the state, in, this, in the county, and especially in White Lake Township. They, they replaced two culverts in White Lake Township as at the requirement of Eagle. And they spent over a million dollars doing that. Uh, in this one here, there were two issues, not only the money, but the time restraint and the time to be able to install this culvert underneath South Commerce Road because of the main north-south corridor here for the village and Commerce Township. They are, uh, they are looking to install it as a maintenance item instead of an engineered bid out item and have a, sub, have a contractor actually do it. So uh, they're working with Eagle and it looks like they're going to get approval to do it as a maintenance item that the Road Commission is going to do with their own, their own uh, staff. And it should only take about a week if they do it instead of the three months that it took them to do the White Lake Township um, culverts. So uh, that was the latest, but they don't know when they can start yet because they are working with Eagle. So they have to get the permits from Eagle. The last item, we, uh, we have advertised that the road paving project is going to, uh, the plans are going to be done and out for bids on this next Wednesday. So I'll be able to have those bids back to you for next month so that we can uh, do a back-to-back -back bidding for uh, this budget year and next budget year. Um, and we listened to uh, Chief Ellsworth and we are not <coughs> having any construction work at all done the week of January, th uh, July 3rd. So we're doing all the work on non-lakefront roads prior to that time and lakefront uh, roads after that time. 
and I'm also working with uh, Andy. Uh, Andy is a, a great just a great asset here in the village. And I'm working with him to uh, make sure that we're uh, uh, addressing all the concerns that DPW has on the local roads as well in this paving project. So unless you have any other questions or concerns, that's my update for this week. Anybody any questions? Okay, thank, thank you, Council. Thank you, thank you Mike. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, under, we have no public hearings, so we move on to uh, new business item A, which is Parks and Rec recommendation to release $1,200 from the budget of funds for the 5K event. Motion. Second. Motion by Josh, second by Jeremy. Any discussion on that? Roll call, please. McNutt? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Newman? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Duff? Yes. Jeremy? Yes. Kishnecki? Yes. Okay, next up is a 2024 through 2027 Police Dispatch Service Agreement. This is going to be with Oakland County. Dave, you want to take this? Um, <coughs> Council, this is a, a big pill for us to swallow. This represents a 27% increase in uh, fees over the current fees, but um, really the uh, Dispatch services that the county provides are the only option that the village really has. Um, it's uh, not uh, realistic or cost efficient for us to think about reestablishing our own. The county does do a, a very good job with the dispatch. Um, as to the uh, the basis for the cost increase, as I indicated to the in the memo that uh, um, the, the county has indicated that the cost increase is a, a result of. Um, the labor contracts that they've settled with the very very various bargaining units wage increases there and then uh, they also indicate that the county board of commissioners is allocating some of their hard costs to some of the other services that their various entities provide so i mean we're familiar with that concept it's something we do as well but uh, this is really the first time i think the county has taken a hard look at it in terms of the dispatch service agreement so it's a significant increase but it's a service that we need to have and this is the best option for the village and incidentally it is a little lower than what uh, what we received to begin with what, initially that's correct yeah which was significantly <coughs> higher even than these figures so so with that i guess motion to approve the agreement the three-year agreement so three -year agreement. second Thank you. motion by Duff, second by newman to approve the 24-27 uh, Police Dispatch Service Agreement with Oakland County. One question I have for the Chief. So um, I know in the past they were talking about switching from the open sky over the P-25 system. Is that part of this agreement also? Yeah, they provide us with the radios okay. through the 911 system. Okay. Um, but also, just so you know, we've actually explored other ways to go about trying to get cheaper dispatch. Sure. Um, we looked at Innova and their uh, unions demanded such a heavy uh, increase that they said it wasn't feasible for them. Okay. Um, we actually have talked to White Lake because the new radios, it doesn't matter, we could have dispatch from Grand Rapids. Sure. We like it to keep it local. So not only us, Wall Lake, uh, Wixom, uh, we were talking the possibility of pop in the future of a, like a that can, uh, yeah, just kind of a, a center. I know White Lake is building a new uh, public safety center, and they're including enough room to have four consoles. Okay. And just so you know, that was done uh, with this possibility in mind. I didn't know that. So we do have uh, that. We we obviously thinking ahead. So, gotcha. but we 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 don't like to be locked in. We like sure. to have choices. It makes it a little bit more competitive for everybody. So. Okay. Okay, so with that, any other discussion? Okay, we'll call the vote, please. Sandro? Yes. Newman? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Duff? Yes. Mirmini? Yes. McNutt? Yes. Cincinnati? Yes. Well, she's not here, but she'll be back. She's here, but not here. Yep. And motion passes anyways. Um, moving along to Act 50, next item is Act 51 Street System Map Corrections. So this is something that uh, obviously 
<laughs> for everyone, for everyone's benefit, um, our Act 51 street system map is the official record of all the public streets that are located in the village, um, and. Um, as part of the requirement for the village re obtaining any Act 51 road funding from the state, we have to have a current Act 51 roadmap on file. So every year we get a request um, from uh, the Michigan Department of Transportation along with a copy of our current Act 51 map to essentially certify that the map is still accurate and correct. And again, that provides the basis for our funding for the upcoming year. Every once in a while, uh, we get contacted um, by MDOT indicating that they have a question or an issue about something that's on the Act 51 map. Um, and as to item A under this, uh, this memo, um, I was contacted late last fall by MDOT. Um, there is a portion of Ladd Road that several years ago was actually removed just north of Adelaide Drive, right where the curb is, because there's a guardrail and a berm that's been put in the location. So there's roughly 20 feet of roadway that was taken up, so it's no longer there, but it's still shown on our Act 51 map. So MDOT had asked that we correct our Act 51 map to remove <coughs> that 20 foot section of the roadway from the map. And um, you know, we looked into it, and they're absolutely correct. I mean, the road isn't there anymore. So we do need to make that correction to the map. However, in taking a look at that, what I noticed was, and what I attached to your memo, the second page, this is a portion of the village's current Act 51 road map. And right over about uh, 3 o'clock on the right-hand side, there's a circle there. Mm -hmm. um, that's the area in question. You can see where Ladd Road curves around to Adelaide Drive and then uh, goes north into Wolverine Drive. Um, it's right at the intersection of Ladd and Adelaide where the 20 feet needs to be taken out. And again, that's not an issue. But then you go a little bit further north and um, Ladd Road actually connects at the top. It, uh, when, you, when you get up to um, where Lakeview comes in, Ladd Road jogs over to the left a little bit and then circles around and there is a full loop back down towards Adelaide Drive um, on the uh, east side of the road. So this obviously doesn't show the connection at the top of Ladd Road, mm -hmm. and which again isn't a huge issue, but my concern is number one, we want the map to be accurate, but number two, I'm afraid that if we remove the portion of Ladd Road directly north of Adelaide, we're going to have basically a ghost strip of street mm -hmm. hanging out there north of Adelaide, um, and we'll also lose our funding for that. So. Um, I asked the village engineer to go out and complete the uh, the center line survey that would be necessary to add that semicircle at the top connecting the two stretches of Ladd Road to our Act 51 map. So that would be the second resolution the, under, under item B would be to add that portion of Ladd Road again. The um, um, let's see, it's the. Uh, So radius, basically. Radius, radius. Yeah, radius. Yeah, that's yeah. The, thank yeah. you. That's what I was yeah. looking for. To add that. So um, the resolution in Part A would be to remove the portion of the road that is no longer there from our Act 51 map. The resolution in Part B is to add a portion of the road that is there that is not shown on our Act 51 map. So um, I would need two separate resolutions because I will have to certify each resolution to send up to MDOT along with. Um, uh, a copy of the Act 51 map showing exactly the changes that we're proposing. So the first, Mr. Gillen, wonder, um, Chief just reminded me that uh, we did remove a portion of Wakito from the local streets oh, as well. Yeah. Should we, while we're at it, should we remove that section of Wakito from the Act 51 map as well? Well, number one, uh, MDOT hasn't made an issue of that yet. 
Okay. Um, but we can certainly take a look at it. But you and I work we, together. We have to. We have to to certify the map every year. So yeah. if there's something that's on there that isn't there, okay. we can take it off next year. All right. Um, Very good. But at this point, but but we would need a separate resolution. We don't have the resolution together, and I need to have all this information to MDOT uh, by the middle of next week. Okay. So. Very good. Thank you. All right. That's true, though. We should yeah. <laughs> at least look at updating that, too. That, that's a good catch. Hey, so, you know, and I'll... And without pulling out the file and going over it, we might have already removed that. I'm not sure. That so, could be. Yeah. I don't remember, but. Because I know I've had to make a couple corrections over the last couple years. There was another portion of a roadway over on, uh, off of Laguna that was showing as a stub when actually the stub had been taken up and there was actually a house in that location. So we made that correction last year. I'll double check on the Rukio. So the first resolution will be the decertification and deletion to the village local street system. Then and the second so the one. portion of Adelaide Drive north of the guardrail. Yes, right. that's correct. Okay. Okay. So motion to decertify 20, 20 feet of the portion um, of Lad Road. Portion of Lad Road. Um, yeah. To the village local street system. Yep. Second. Motion by Duff. Second by Jeremini. Any discussion on that? Okay. Roll call vote, please. Newman? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Duff? Yes. Jeremy? Yes. McNutt? Yes. Kaznecki? Yes. Nedro? Yes. And the second resolution of decertification addition to the village's local street system regarding the radius portion of Lad Road, right? And this um, that's correct, and it would be the according addition. to the according to the uh, legal description as stated on the resolution. Yeah, it's an addition of seventy point six nine feet to the map. Yes, that's correct. Make a motion for the additional seventy point six nine feet. Uh, motion by Newman, second by Duff. Any discussion on that? Roll call vote, please. O'Brien. Yes. Duff. Yes. Jeremy. Yes. Duff. Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next item is uh, Council Chambers Furniture, which we had uh, talked about and kind of half budgeted for when we did our, our uh, American Recovery Act funds. That's correct, yeah. And we we still do have some money in the budget, you know, that we purchased these, the nice chairs that we're sitting on. The council authorized that purchase last month, and I uh, uh, appreciate that. And I think all the various boards and commissions that have been using the chairs appreciate them, too. And I think uh, most of us up here are right to, to tonight as well. So, um, But this is, uh, I guess, the other half of the discussion, uh, which would be to replace the council desk. Again, as I've indicated in the memo, we've been talking with the members of the, the staff, some of our longest serving employees, Chief Ellsworth and also Andy Stone and the DPW. Um, I think this council table might have been here as long as the two of them have been employed here. Um, and that's a long time. So um, I have sought uh, quotes from a variety of sources for the replacement. Um, and uh, my recommendation is that the village award the uh, uh, the bid for the replacement of the council furniture to Castell of Commerce Township. It's the vendor that's provided us with the chairs. But as I've indicated in the memo, they are not the low bidder necessarily. Um, they are close to the low bidder. It's not a huge dollar amount between the two. But in terms of Castell's ability to turn the uh, the new furniture around in a timely fashion, get it installed in a timely fashion. Um, they've indicated that the lead time through their, uh, their partner in Madison Heights, it would be probably six to eight weeks to have the table actually constructed. But once it is constructed, Castell's employees can come in and they can put it in in a day. So we won't have to worry about other meeting schedules and things like that. Um, they've done other work for us. As I've indicated in the memo, they've installed most of the council of the uh, furniture that's in the village hall upstairs. So there are known quantity, um, and my recommendation is that we move forward with Castell. Motion to approve Castell as the supplier of the new furniture, not to exceed twenty thousand dollars. We're getting that right. Yes. <laughs> 
Yep. Where's my duff? Second. Second by O'Brien. In discussion. Is this the drawing that we were on our table? Yeah, the out? drawing at the table, yes, okay. is the uh, the drawing that uh, that their uh, rep had put together after he, he came down. We walked the uh, the area and he made some measurements. He, this is actually a, the second or third version of it. And actually, what we're talking about, as you can see, is not really a horseshoe, but an angled council table. And it actually would be in four pieces. Um, because he <coughs> determined that the centerpiece uh, of the, uh, the the desk, there'd be no way to get it into the building <laughs> the way it's laid out here. So the centerpiece will actually be two pieces that will be joined together and then the two pieces on the side. Um, a, a grommet for a microphone at each seat. And again, we're talking about expanding up to 12. So in addition to the 10 of us that are at the table now, uh, the police chief and the village engineer would also be able to sit at the table. Um, and then also an outlet that we wouldn't be wiring right now, but we could down the road for both uh, electricity and for data. So looking forward a little bit. So um, in addition to that, there would also be um, a new desk that would be built for the recording secretary. Um, and then also a small cabinet that we would keep somewhere in the back. We'll have to work through the exact details of the location with our friends from Merge Live. But the cabinet would be for some storage, but primarily to house the sound equipment that's currently on the recording secretary's desk. We felt that it did need to be right out there. We could move that to the back, save some space. So um, if you have any questions about the, the diagram, I could try to, to answer those. They have given me, I didn't bring them down, but I do have samples of the laminate that we would be using, and we can mix and match. And um, I've had uh, uh, both my administrative assistants, both Tabitha and Paige, have been down here with the, uh, the laminate, and they've made some recommendations that I think are pretty good recommendations. So probably what we're talking about is a solid gray for the front and kind of like a, a gray wood grain for the top. Uh, we were talking about black for the top, but we had some concerns that it would be scratched easily and it would show things like that. So, but uh, we can work out those details um, with uh, with Brian Sims uh, from Castell, assuming that council authorizes the, uh, the purchase tonight. Good. Sounds good. Any other discussion? All right, let's do a roll call vote, please. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, next item is cost participation agreement for McCoy Road Surfacing. This will be through our tri-party program, I believe. And uh, this is a project that I have mentioned in a couple of the up updates that I've sent to you. Um, again, the total project, a little bit more than $40,000. Our share of the project, uh, $14,149. A matching shares from both Oakland County and the Road Commission. And if there is any additional cost, well, the Road Commission is going to have to eat that additional cost. Um, and this is work that would be done um, this year um, in conjunction with the paving of Lad Road that the Road Commission also is planning to do. Hopefully, Bald Lake will participate in that and we can get all the way down to Maple. Yeah, that kind of what? Yeah, we'll see. We'll be close, but yeah. Okay, we've got plenty of funds in our tri party program right now, so yeah, we have over uh, 42, over 42,000. So we're right. taking a third of our tri party funding, so we'll still have some money left mm -hmm. for any other projects that, uh, that the village engineer can cook up. So, <laughs> okay, make a motion to approve the funding of the tri county funds for McCoy Research Center. <coughs> motion by Newman, second, second by Duff. Any other discussion on it? Seeing none, let's do a roll call vote, please. O'Brien? Yes. Duff? Yes. Jeremy? Yes. Kaznacki? Yes. Nutt? Yes. Nadro? Yes. Newman? Yes. Okay, we are at the second call of the public. And 
this opportunity for assistance to address council on any items. So if you please Motion state open. your name. Yep. Motion open. Good evening, members Oops, of council. Excuse me, hold on for a second, please. <laughs> Motion open. Yep. Second. Motion by McNutt, second by O'Brien to open the public. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now you can state your name and address. Okay. Thank Good you. evening. My name is Beth Ayers. My address is uh, 936 Amenia Street. Uh, I've lived in the village for 29 years, although my history goes back to a little girl with my aunt and uncle owning a home off Shank Inn on the lake. Uh, before I delve into the heart of my concerns, I'd like to take a moment to express my deep, deepest appreciation to Chief Ellsworth for his son's sacrifice and service to our country. It is a reminder of a profound sacrifice that many families, including my own, have made in service to this country. I'd also like to echo the sentiments uh, expressed last month by Mr. Remke regarding the commendable actions of our police department and medical emergencies. However, like many of our other citizens, I find myself in agreement with Mr. Laybourne's call to carefully examine the expenditures of our police department and evaluate its true capabilities to serve our community effectively as a police department. My own interactions with the department have mirrored Mr. Laybourne's experiences. We have witnessed the transformation of our police force from its humble beginnings to one that now costs our small village over a million dollars annually. Yet despite this significant investment, essential police services seem to be lacking. Investigations are virtually non-existent. Basic report writing appears to be a challenge, and there's a concerned lack of proficiency in utilizing essential equipment for ensuring transparency in their operations. Moreover, there's an ambiguity surrounding the services provided by our police department with officers seemingly choosing whom to serve. The selective approach raises questions about the integrity of their operations and contradicts the notion of impartiality that should define law enforcement. Instead of prioritizing essential services, we find ourselves investing in excessive SUVs and sports cars. It begs the question, do we truly need these vehicles, or would our community benefit more from additional resources such as paramedics and an ambulance? Chief Ellsworth has reassured us that the relocation of the sheriff's station to Martin Road will result in fewer sheriff vehicles traveling our streets. However, it's essential to recognize that Martin Road is merely a few miles away, and the impact on our community would be minimal. Additionally, recent discussions about the increase in dispatch costs from Commerce Township raised concerns about potential double taxation for dispatch services. As residents, we already are burdened with double taxation for police services, paying Commerce Township taxes for Oak County Sheriff and the Wolverine Light taxes for selective police services that they provide. In conclusion, while we acknowledge the, and appreciate the dedication of our police department, it is imperative that we critically ask, assess the expenditures and ensure that tax dollars are being allotted effectively to meet the needs of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next. Well, I know we've got the school, the school system here. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Village Council Administration, residents of Wolverine uh, Lake Village, uh, for um, letting me speak tonight. My name is Bill Chatfield. I am the Operations Director for the Walled Lake School District. I've uh, been there for a long time now. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about the bond election that the uh, school district is, is having on May the 7th. Wolverine Lake sits in the heart of the Wald Lake School District, the Wald Lake Consolidated School District. We're very proud of the collaboration and relationship we've had with Wolverine, uh, with the village of Wolverine Lake, and we just want to make sure that the council and the community know the uh, uh, the purpose uh, and the ramifications of the bond. Yeah, essentially, we have an opportunity to make a, a, a significant uh, improvement and investment into our schools at no increase 
uh, to the taxpayers. We have an opportunity to, uh, by uh, renewing the uh, current uh, the school tax rate, uh, an opportunity to invest $250 million into our facilities to improve their infrastructure, technology, and security. Uh, in fact, it would be a 0 0.08 mil tax decrease. Uh, due to the fiscal prudence of our business department over the years, uh, bonds from the 2000 bond program, uh, in part, uh, part of which were used to build Northern High School, fall off this year, and we have an opportunity to extend the current tax rate uh, to continue to invest in our schools as we have done for the past five bond programs. They've all been an extension of the current tax rate uh, that the community has supported to continue investing and improving uh, our schools. So the program would include several major initiatives uh, that were recommended by an advisory committee and approved by our Board of Education following a, a pretty comprehensive facility utilization study that was completed last year. That study did show that based on our declining enrollment that we've had for about 15 years now, we are currently at a point where we have more classroom space than we need for the number of students in the district. So as a result of that, the recommendations would include to close and repurpose one yet to be determined middle school. We have a, 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 a low utilization, relatively low utilization rate at our middle schools based on the enrollment. We would relocate our adult transition program, which is our um, uh, 18 to 26 year old uh, transition program for uh, seniors in our special services programs that have, have graduated the K-12 program and still need some additional uh, occupational training uh, that we provide. Uh, we would relocate those uh, programs to a facility that can accommodate the current and future needs because that is a growing program. We would close and relocate the functions at the district administration building to uh, some other buildings to better, better utilize that available space. We would close our Twin Sun Center, our small uh, early childhood center on Loon Lake Road and, and put those programs into an existing elementary school. And we would rebuild uh, our, our now our oldest elementary school, Wixom Elementary, uh, on a new site, uh, on a site that we own currently in Wixom uh, with a new, brand new uh, elementary school building, similar to what we did with Dublin Elementary in the 2019 bond. It would also allow us to uh, add to and update our security systems, harden our entrances, as well as replace our deteriorating fiber optic network that runs throughout the whole district and is how we uh, communicate between schools. Our current school debt levy is 4.13 mills. Uh, if this bond passes, that would drop to 4.05 mills. What that means for the community is that the owner of a $200,000 home with a state equalized value of, let's say, approximately $100,000 would pay $405 in school taxes each year based on the value of their house. And obviously, if it's more expensive, it's the same ratio. But um, so that is about $33 a month, which is frankly a little bit less than it has been uh, historically for the past 20 years, but still enough to allow the district to continue to invest in our schools. Just so you know, that 4.05 uh, mills is would be 24th, the 24th <coughs> lowest out of five minutes. Uh, oh, I have so. Uh, I will wrap up. So we are 24th out of 28 uh, in, the, in, the, in the county in terms of uh, the lowest uh, millage rate. And um, so those monies can only be spent on facilities, not on people or programs. So I just wanted to make sure that people were aware of that. I want to thank uh, the council for uh, hearing us tonight and uh, urge everybody to vote on uh, May the 7th. Okay, thank you well, thank for you the very update. Much. Appreciate thank you. you. <laughs> Okay, next. Mr. Laymore. Number 2335, shaken. I don't know how to do this. Okay. 
I have a two-minute video. Is it going or what? Right input? Yep. Okay. Which one? I'll sit and I'll sit.
said, he came to my house to tell the chief that I wanted to fire the chief. The county did the investigation. I was not asked at all about this investigation. I want you to read where I have the green and tell me where is David Labor involved in telling Ed Sikowitz to fire the chief. Because there's been so many rumors about me that I have a stack of videos and pictures He said that um, I have far out ideas. I guess my ideas were okay when I supported. And, and what all, are Mr. President, it's been five minutes. Can you give me a little bit of time since we have problems? I, I would allow that, I, yes. I, I waited until your video started. We'll give him another minute, okay? So you have five minutes. I'll go back and check to make sure you've done this to every, time, to every other person. That's I, I have. I, 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 I need one of them. Last time I was here, you were going like this. Mr. Dowd, let's, let's just let him finish up. Right, I hope I don't catch you not what, doing the same thing to other people. Cable I ordinance. Know. I was for it. We got it. It was a big issue with lakes. Road innings. It was an issue on the lake. We got it. I didn't get any hassle from anybody. One of the biggest issues on lakes in Michigan are riparian rights. And that's what I've been trying to do for the 25 years. It only takes one person to wreck, one person to wreck the whole community that you folks are putting your boats in. Tiki Kendall, Mr. Um, uh, what's his name, said it wouldn't last more than three years. We're going over 30 some years. I started that thing. Chemical treatment out of the lake. Going to Lansing and getting them to have, uh, allow us to, to approve it. Removing 1,200 stamps, uh, stumps. This lake would not be the way it is now if those stumps were there today. Those stumps went halfway across the lake from my house. At that time, we had 25 horsepower engines with an 18 horsepower or 18 foot uh, uh, boat. It was a different lake then. Now it's a different lake. And thank goodness we made some of these uh, uh, changes. I'll see you next meeting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Laborn. Anybody else in the public wish to comment? Seeing none, motion to close. Motion to close. Second. Motion by second by McNutt. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Move on. Mr. Gillen requests council move into closed session to discuss collective bargaining strategy pursuant to MCL 15.267, subsection 1. Motion to go into closed session. Motion to go into closed council. Closed session. Closed session. session. And that would be oh, after right. after item. <coughs> Um, that right up 17. So, no, that would be right at this time. Oh, right at this time. Okay. Yep. Before we okay, uh, take up item H. So. Okay. Uh, second. Motion by uh, Newman, second by Duff. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Okay. So we'll adjourn to go into closed session. Great. So we will be back down shortly. The rest of the meeting. Yes. Yes. Mr. Gallagher, you want to walk out there for that one? Sure. You can drag yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see you. Bye, everyone. I'm not the council in my house. Yeah, right. right.
So you don't get. That's true. It's and pretty we, intimidating. Uh, we would absolutely uh <laughs> so, so.
Okay, we're back into open session. So next on the agenda is item H, which is tentative agreement for Michigan Fraternal Order of Police Labor Council. Motion to approve tentative agreement. Second. That would be a three-year agreement. Three-year agreement, yeah. Ending in 27, as uh, presented from the administrator yep. and the negotiation committee. Okay. That was a motion by Duff, second by Newman. Any other discussion? Seeing none, let's do a roll call vote, please. Duff? Yes. Jeremini? Yes. Kaznecki? Yes. McNutt? Yes. Nedro? Yes. Newman? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Okay. Next item is our uh, Lakes Area Youth Assistance Charitable Gaming License. So this is going to be at the... Uh, this is for the... Case of the Lakes. Case of the Lakes. Yep. Yeah, I got a telephone call from Youth Assistance last Friday <clears throat> indicating that uh, I don't know if this is an issue that was just brought to their attention or what the issue is, but um, they were scrambling to find uh, the go a local governing body resolution that they could sub submit in support of their application for a raffle license for Taste of the Lakes. <laughs> so um, the timing worked out well for us to do it. I told us if they could get me a letter ASAP that we could add this to the agenda. The letter came in, we added to the agenda. Um, I think we're all familiar with uh, the work that the Youth Assistance does, mm -hmm. not only in the village, but in the other communities around. It's a great organization and we all benefit in a variety of ways. I don't think there's any issue with us. So adopting this resolution in support of their raffle license. So I would recommend approval of the resolution that's contained in the form submitted by the state of Michigan. And that's going to be at the Taste of the Lakes, which is generally in September. September, yes. yes. Motion to approve the resolution as presented by the administrator in, in the um, Lakes Area Youth Assistance. Motion by Duff. Second. Second by Jeremini. Any discussion on that? Let's do a roll call vote on that team, please. Jeremy? Yes. Kaznecki? Yes. McNutt? Yes. Nedro? Yes. Newman? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Duff? Yes. Okay, next item is uh, set topics for April 24 work session. And I don't have anything for a work session in April, so motion we're going to have one in May for sure. We will have a budget work yeah. session in May. Yeah, mark that on your calendars. But motion to go. Second. second. Motion to Duff, second by McNutt. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries on that. Pending business, we have none. Update, please, Chief Ellsworth. Well, thank you, first of all, for approving the CBA, the collective bargaining agreement with the police department, and thank you for allowing me to take part in that. I thought it was very constructive. I thought it was a very fair and balanced contract with the officers, and I appreciate being a part of that. Uh, number two, uh, thank you, Ms. Ayers, for your kind words for my family tonight. I appreciate that. Um, I have three meetings, two haircuts <laughs> left. That's it. Chief. Treasurer Hanson. Um, I uh, will be attending the Treasurer's um, Association, um, the MMTA, and I'll be on my third year. It's a, a full week of training, and I'll be receiving my Treasurer certification, and I'm really excited about that. And sure. thank you for sending me. It's been a lot of um, really good information, and I really enjoyed and learned a lot from it. So thank you for that. Um, uh, I want to express my um, condolences to the McNutt family for the loss of your wonderful grandfather and father. And um, we, um, there's really not much more to report. I'll be coming to you next month with a with a, a budget of some sort, and that that's where we'll have it from our leaping place for Good. for for the May work session. Great. 
Great job. Three years already. Yes. Wow. No, I've been here two years. I know. That's but your it third, was third, my third, third one. Third I know. One <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember Sam. <laughs> Three years she's going to go through this? <laughs> it's long. Done deal. <laughs> Great. Mr. Gillum. Uh, a couple things. First of all, um, everyone's one of everyone's favorite subjects, the Benstein Water Main Project. Um, I, <laughs> it's, I got it in, keeps I, going and going. I got, an energizing brother. Well, I, I uh, got in touch with uh, Commerce Township's consulting engineer um, in uh, the end is in sight. Um, he's indicated this is by far one of the most complicated and difficult projects that he's ever been involved in. Um, but he's indicating that the actual plumbing work, the, the water connections and everything, should be complete within the next two weeks. And then once the um, actual water connections have been made, uh, then they'll start with the restoration of all the ditches and lawns in the area. So I'm not sure how long that'll take. Would you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> you actually believe that. Don't work yeah. too yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but again, the, the actual uh, water line should be connected within the next couple weeks. And again, as a reminder to everyone, it's a benefit to the village too because it provides an alternative mm -hmm. way for city water to get into the village if there's ever a problem. <laughs> With the water that's coming in, slightly exceeded 12 weeks. Yeah, yeah. just a bit. Um, and then I, I think a number of people have probably noticed that uh, there was an accident um, involving the message board up at the corner of uh, Glengarry and South Commerce. We had a, a resident that uh, slid off the road um, in uh, the snow and ice on a Saturday morning and uh, did a pretty good number on the uh, on the sign. Um, <coughs> We have been in touch with, uh, first of all, with our insurance agency, and insurance is going to cover the damage. Um, I've also been in touch with the sign company. They've been out, they've inspected the sign. Um, they've given me an estimate of what the cost is going to be. Um, what they're actually going to have to do, they're going to have to, to bring a flatbed truck out, and they're going to have to pick up the sign, load it onto the truck, and then take it back to their shop in Clarkson, because really the only part of the sign that can be salvaged is going to be the electronic guts, the, the LED message center inside. The sign structure itself is basically one piece. Um, in looking at it, you might think that the aluminum skirting around the bottom could be peeled off and replaced, but that's all interrelated to the structure. So it's going to be probably an eight-week process for them to construct a new sign. So. Um, the Beautification Committee has been out and they've removed um, any plannings that they had around the sign, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Christy Nedro and uh, Julie Miller, who were out doing that this morning. I saw them on my way in. They were pulling the, uh, the, the plannings out. And I've been in touch with the sign company, so they'll get the actual removal of the sign onto their schedule to get started. But again, it'll probably be a couple months until they can actually build a new sign and get it back on site. Um, my sympathies to the McNutt family as well. Uh, Mike, I apologize I wasn't able to get to the funeral home last weekend because I was sick all last week. And, and also, um, my sympathies to the O'Brien family. I understand there was a loss in the O'Brien family last week, too. Um, um, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Council comments? We'll start over with Ms. Kaznegi, I guess. Well, I, I apologize. I didn't realize <coughs> until tonight about, Kathy told me about, she saw it in the bulletin at the church, uh, Mike, but in your family. And Bill, for years, I, my heart felt you know, lose the view on that. And I, that's it for me. Okay. Sorry about the coughing fit I had earlier. <laughs> Sounds like you have a cold. It's a spring cold. Mark? Condolences to the McDuck family and the O'Brien family, and that's all I got. Mr. Newman? Sam, our hearts are with you guys for your losses. Okay. And, uh, a little something from uh, the water board. Get your uh, shrink wrap recycle bags mm -hmm. upstairs and get ready to turn them in the 15th through the 18th. Uh, May. May. I think so. <clears throat> and they're going like hotcakes. We had given our 22 away as of this afternoon. So. Hello. And so if you just come into the village hall, we just need to get your address and uh, we'll be happy to give you one of the uh, 
for recycling bags. So good program. No cost or cost for the recycle bags. No cost. No cost no to the cost. residents. No. Okay. Courtesy of the uh, water management board. Bill. Uh, just thank goodness spring is finally here. Mm -hmm. You know, I hope everyone has a safe uh, safe month till uh, our next meeting and. Uh, Sorry to hear about your grandfather, my dad. Your dad. Yeah. Sorry to hear about your dad. Didn't know until now. Thank you. Mike? Um, just like to thank the village for all the condolences and arrangements. So, thanks to I appreciate all the well wishes. Thank you. Mark? Uh, Mike, Bill, my condolences. Um, May 25th is the 5K. Uh, promoting promotions have started for that, so you can get signed up for that. I'd like to thank the Park and Rec Board for their work at the uh, Bunny Luncheon this year, which uh, featured snow <laughs> and a uh, very interesting egg hunt. Egg roll, yeah. <laughs> uh, especially when I found a white egg uh, laying out that the kids missed, and I was like, oh, hopefully that was the only one. But uh, it was a little messier, but it went pretty well. Okay, and the only thing I have, I guess, uh, condolences to both families. Uh, Last week here, we both lost. So, on a happier note, I want to wish Miss Hanson happy belated birthday yesterday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. And with that happy spring, I think warmer weather's finally here. I know Chief Junks jinxed us last month with his letter, but uh, it's going in the right direction anyway. So, with that, set the motion to adjourn. Make a motion to. Uh, Motion. I'll make a motion for adjournment. Motion by Newman, second by Jeremy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.